Welcome to this new module, Medical Emergencies. It will cover all types of medical emergencies. After completing this module, you should be able to define terms related to medical emergencies, explain the purpose of an emergency cart and its contents, describe the signs and symptoms and procedures for handling various medical emergencies, and finally demonstrate appropriate principles of cardiopulmonary resuscitation. We will now review fire extinguishers, including types, the use, and precautions. A fire is a chemical reaction involving rapid oxidation or burning of a fuel and needs three elements to occur. Fuel, which can be any combustible material, solid, liquid, or gas. Oxygen, which is present in the air we breathe. Room air, is about 21% oxygen, and a fire only needs an atmosphere of 40% oxygen to burn. Heat is the necessary energy to increase the temperature of the fuel to a point where sufficient vapors are given off or ignition to occur. If any of these elements are removed, the fire either cannot occur or it will be extinguished if it was already burning. There are five classifications of fires based on the type of material burning. A type A fire involves ordinary combustibles or fibrous material such as wood, paper, cloth, rubber, some plastics, and basic furniture. A type B fire involves flammable or combustible liquids such as gasoline, kerosene, paint, paint thinners, and propane. A type C fire involves energized electrical equipment such as appliances, switches, panel boxes, and power tools. A type D fire involves combustible materials such as magnesium, titanium, potassium, and sodium. These metals burn at high temperatures and create their own oxygen to support combustion. They may react violently with water or other chemicals. And last but not least, type K fires involves grease and are also called kitchen fires. A fire extinguisher is used to put out a fire. The fire extinguishers have the same rating as fires and should be matched to the type of the fire when trying to put it out. A type A extinguisher has dry chemicals, water mist, and water to use on mattresses, paper, trash, furniture, or sheets. A type B extinguisher has carbon dioxide and dry chemicals for use on flammable liquids. The type C extinguisher also has carbon dioxide and dry chemicals for use on electrical equipment. 
the type K extinguisher has carbon dioxide for use on cooking oils and grease and generally for use on fires in the kitchen areas. A fire extinguisher can also carry multiple ratings such as AB, BC, or ABC. These are multiple use extinguishers and can be used for different classes of fires. All ratings are shown on the extinguisher faceplate. ABC rated multi-purpose dry powder extinguishers are the most commonly found fire extinguishers. The MRI area must use MRI compatible fire extinguishers. A fire extinguisher is almost always red in color and have either a long narrow hose or no hose, just a very short nozzle. In using a fire extinguisher, the acronym PASS or P-A-S-S -S, is used to remember how to use a fire extinguisher. P for pull the pin, A for aim the extinguisher nozzle at the base of the fire, S for squeeze the trigger while holding the extinguisher upright, S for sweep the extinguisher from side to side, covering the affected area with the extinguisher agent. Care should be used not to drop a CO2 cylinder. If it is damaged, it can explode due to high pressure. In case of a fire, you should leave the area immediately if your path of escape is threatened, or the extinguisher runs out of agent, or the extinguisher proves to be ineffective, or if you are no longer able to safely fight the fire. Remember that the portable fire extinguishers are only for incipient or beginning fires. Do not try to fight a fire if the fire is spreading beyond the area where it started. If you can't fight the fire with your back to an escape route, if the fire can block your access to the escape route, if you don't have adequate firefighting equipment, or if you have not received proper training on fighting fires and using firefighting equipment. If possible, do not try to fight a fire by yourself. Get help if possible. This concludes the module on medical emergencies. Prior to taking the examination, please reread the module objectives to verify that you have no additional questions to review. We hope you will continue on to the remaining modules in patient care in radiology. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.